Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will, make, you will be made free. Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I recently came across a story that is a few years old now, but it is about a young man named Davian. He was a 15-year-old boy who had grown up in the foster care system his entire life. He finally said, I'm ready to be adopted no matter what, and I've got to do something about this. He told his caseworker this, and the caseworker reminded him that the older he got, the less chance he would have of becoming adopted. But then Davian and his caseworker came up with an idea. They would visit a church and asked if he could go to the microphone at the end of the service and share his story and desire to be adopted. So at a church in Florida, Davian got up at the end of the service, and he said this, My name is Davian Only, and I have been in foster care since I was born. I know God hasn't given up on me, so I'm not giving up on me either. I want to be adopted. I don't care if you're old or young, if you're just a dad or just a mom, if you're black or white or purple, I don't care. I want to be adopted. I just want people to love me for who I am, to grab me and keep me in their house, and to love me no matter what. Well, it worked. He did get adopted. Of course, the process takes a few years, but it happened. And then in an interview a couple years um, after his adoption, he said this, I feel safe. And I feel like, you know, I just have people who care about me. You just have this sense of freedom in that you just know that no matter what, someone's there for you, and you have a support system. As I read these words, the idea of freedom, that freedom that we heard in our gospel reading this morning, took on a little bit of a new light for me. Without a family, without a permanent home, Davian was, was felt at some level that he was not free. He was not free because he didn't know if anyone actually loved him no matter what. As a young man in foster care, he was trapped by what the system would do with him next or what his family, foster family might be able to do. He didn't have the safety of being someone who belonged somewhere. But then a family made him one of their own. And they loved him for who he was. And this, I think, is a bit of what Jesus is trying to get through to us. He spoke of slaves, not foster children, but the sentiment is similar. Neither a slave nor a foster child has a permanent place in the family. And Jesus quite bluntly says that if we sin, we are slaves to sin. And then he reminds us that slaves do not have a permanent place. Sinners don't belong. And we know that we are all sinners. But the good news is that Jesus didn't end his message there. God does not end the story there. 
The beauty of what Luther was trying to point out after reading his Bible carefully and what Jesus is saying in this gospel lesson today is that yes, we are slaves to sin and cannot free ourselves, but Jesus can free us. He does free us every second of every day forever. Through Jesus Christ and the free gift of salvation, we are neither slaves nor orphans. We have been made full members of God's family. Through Jesus' willingness to be clothed in our sins, we are redeemed and free. We belong. We have a place in God's household always, and no matter what, God is there for us. We all know that we live in a bit of a judgmental world. We live in a society that creates heroes and villains. Those who are in, those who are out. Us and them. God, on the other hand, looks at us and says, we are all the same. In last week's sermon about the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee, I suggested that one lesson that Jesus was trying to teach us in that parable is that we are like everyone else, reliant on the grace and mercy of God. And this comes up again in this third chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. One of the translations for these verses says it with a little bit more oomph than the traditional version that we heard this morning out of the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. So here are a few verses from a translation called The Message. And it's clear enough, isn't it, that we are sinners, every one of us, in the same sinking boat with everyone else. Since we've compiled this long and sorry record as sinners and proved that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us, God did it for us. We are all sinners in that same sinking boat. Sinners, all of us doomed to be slaves to what sin, to that sin, if it weren't for God's intervention. The good news is that God does intervene. And part of that good news is that we don't have to spend all of our time and our energy worrying about our standing in God's eyes. Our sins have been taken care of thanks to Jesus' saving work on the cross. And this gives us another kind of freedom Freedom to have an active faith serving others. Because we don't have to spend that time and energy worrying about ourselves and our relationship with God and our standing. We can be active in love as a response to what God has done for us. Now many understand justification to be about a personal relationship with God or with Jesus Christ and about the state of one's soul after death. But it goes further than that. So the word translated as righteousness in these verses from Romans could also be translated as justice. Righteousness meaning to have a right relationship with God, and justice meaning to have a right relationship with our neighbor. In this way, both of these ideas are entwined in what Paul wrote to the Romans. And the reality is that we really can't separate the two. In John's Gospel, as Jesus approaches his final days, we will hear him say, by, every, by this, everyone will know you are just my disciples if you love one another. And in the first letter of John, we read, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. In the end, it is about belonging. We have been set free. Our sins have been forgiven. 
And now we are called to share this message with others and to live in a community where hope and grace are the foundation. I hope that we will continue to, dis to express our gratefulness for God's saving grace through Jesus by living freely in loving our God with all our hearts, all our soul, and all our mind, and by loving our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Oh,